Welcome to AP European History with Dr. Brock, and we continue today uh, with the French Revolution Phase 2, and briefly we talked about the Phase 1, which is the, uh, the, the revolution regime in National Assembly, first reforms, the uh, reform of the church, of the land, etc. <clears throat> so we stop with the uh, king's attempt to flee, which is a turning point. So this is the summer of 1791. Attempt to flee changes the political situation. Now, uh, how does it change it? It changes also is the August declaration of the Austrian government that they want to restore monarchy in France. So this is kind of like a, a declaration of war. Moreover, it's very, very foolish because the declaration actually says if there is a, uh, so much as a hair that fall off, fall off from the hair of the royal couple, uh, then the revolutionaries would be uh, this and that when they, uh, when they, they, Paris is seized. So it, it, is, it is perceived that the king is in cahoots with the foreigners. And of course, Marie Antoinette being an Austrian, that just literally uh, seals their fate in a sense, uh, this kind of declaration. So uh, this is the summer of 91, and still it takes a long time for the Austrians to mobilize and to move. And this is kind of a uh, a rising radicalization of the people that goes on in the fall of uh, 91. Uh, and finally, it is in April 92 that the National Assembly declares war on Austria. So this is, 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 this is the stage where you have officially a new war uh, that is going to last for many, many years to come. And at first, uh, what the key, mo the key thing that, that that defines the situation is the fear. Fear is the key word, fear. Fear of whom? Fear of the revolutionaries in Paris that they will be crushed. Uh, they have absolutely no confidence that they would survive. And so everything they do is in a sense experimentation uh, uh, in order to survive. And everything they do will define that goal uh, of political survival. Uh, so, um, this is when they begin to use guillotine against the uh, enemies of the uh, people of the revolution and increasingly against the aristocrats, those that are suspected uh, of, um, uh, of, of treason. Uh, particularly in this regard is infamous or famous uh, is this guy by the name Marat, uh, M-A-R-A-T, who published a newspaper called uh, Les Amis du Peuple. The friend of the people, which becomes a propaganda piece of the new regime. Marat is a really weird character who had a skin disease and who was a total nobody. But as it turned out, his new talent was in propaganda. And, and here again, there are these new uh, things that emerge with the French Revolution that did not exist before. And such as the, the, the kind of a mass media propaganda, as today Twitter is, uh, or Facebook, that, that makes gilets jaunes to mobilize themselves. At this time, this role was played by Les Amis de Peuple. It's, it's a newspaper that he edits, he publishes, and it kind of, the only message there is all the time, wake up the people of Paris, expose the enemies of the revolution. He's kind of like a whip that always instigates more violence and more revolutionary ardor, uh, and, and isn't it a one-man show? It turns out to be a kind of a, mass propaganda machine that the Bolsheviks would have a, a JIT prop, agitation and propaganda department that would do this. He did it on his own, by himself, uh, and that is Marat's role, mobilization of the masses against counter-revolutionaries. Uh, so this is what he does. And the consequence is awful. Uh, on several occasions, there are, uh, the, the, the galvanized masses run into the city prisons and massacre all the aristocrats that are in it. Uh, it's a pretty terrible sight where big priests and aristocrats and others who are held there on suspicion, not for any particular action, on suspicion of being counter-revolutionaries. They're, they're murdered, uh, massacred, hacked into pieces uh, by these crazed revolutionary masses. Uh, and this is when London Times wrote one of its famous pieces is this the droit des hommes? Is, is this what the French Revolution is all about? Uh, this kind of mass murder that, that is more uh, vicious and more uncivilized than the bestiality of, of uh, colonial uh, 
possession somewhere in Africa. So in other words, uh, the, the London Times become very hostile to the French Revolution after these massacres, and now uh, it's moving in the direction of England joining the coalition, because now it appears the French Revolution is off track. Uh, proclaiming the rights of people, it is degenerating into kind of a bloody dictatorship of propagandists and bloodthirsty dictators who uh, abuse the king and the queen and want to impose their will on the French people. That's the perception that is being uh, conveyed uh, in London. Now, indeed, uh, there is a radicalization going on in 92, uh, and, and that is uh, in this formation of the clubs and things. And now we have to uh, analyze it in terms of dynamics in a modern social science way. What is actually happening is a process that is quite common in any revolution. And in any revolution, what you have is a process of radicalization, which means that, that the, the, the more outrageous you are, the more attractive you are. The more outrageous slogans you pull out, uh, the more appealing you are to the masses. As I told you before, this is competition of who is going to outdo in the radicalness and devotion to revolution, the, the masses or the National Assembly. And the National Assembly feels they have to be in step with the radical masses because they can't do anything about them, because they depend on them. They, they cannot depend on the church, they cannot depend on nobility, they cannot depend on aristocracy, and the only thing that they can depend on is revolutionary masses, so they have to please them all the time. And at this moment, what you can please them with is more blood, uh, more executions, more guillotine working against the counter-revolutionaries. So um, uh, the, the things come to a, for, to, to a kind of a crucial moment is in August 92. So in April, the war is declared, then there are massacres in the prisons. But August uh, 92, you have uh, the king, uh, the, the mobs attack Tuileries Palace. Uh, just like they did with Versailles a year earlier. Uh, and now, actually, two years earlier, uh, and now the king runs to the National Assembly and says, please protect me, I am a constitutional king. Uh, and they do uh, save his life, but they put him uh, on guard. They, he is actually now officially arrested uh, and uh, put in, um, in custody. And they proclaim new elections to the new uh, regime. So this is going to be the end of the National Assembly and new elections are taking place. In September 92, this new uh, regime is proclaimed as the uh, République Française. So that's where it happens. The newly elected National Assembly renamed itself Convention, the Convention. And uh, the new people come to power and they actually stop constitutional monarchy. They dump the Constitution of 1891, which was a constitutional monarchy with a role given to the king. Now all that is gone, and you have a new political order, which is established as the French Republic. Uh, but the French Republic is born uh, is, uh, in, in this atmosphere of terror. Uh, and this is uh, called the September Massacres. So simultaneously with elections, with September proclamation of the French Revolution, French Revolution is proclaimed at the time of mass murders of the aristocrats. This is when the guillotine is chopping off heads. This is where you have murders of the priests, the, the awful pictures of their naked bodies being dumped into mass graves uh, with, with their hacked to pieces in uh, jails for essentially no trial, no personal uh, guilt established whatsoever, uh, a thousand corpses in September 92 uh, in Paris alone. Uh, it is driven by the frenzy which is propelled by Les Amis du Peuple Marat and by the fear of the Austrians. If the Austrians and Prussians are going to come to Paris, they're going to kill us all. Therefore, we're going to prevent it and kill the enemies of the revolution. Now, wake up, Parisians. Go and unmask those enemies of the people. Go and kill them now. These are the words you could read in Les Amis de Purple day after day after day after day. The guy was probably crazy. I mean, to be so bloodthirsty uh, constantly, all the time, that he just can't stop. Uh, so, the convention uh, uh, 
uh, goes into a new uh, gear of uh, reforms. And uh, the first thing they want to do uh, is put the king on trial. So in the fall of 92, they prepare the trial of the king for treason. Uh, they uh, do many interesting other things, uh, such as they abolish slavery in the colonies. So it took them a while to wake up to this, but in Guadeloupe, in Martinique, there's still slavery. So the, the convention does abolish uh, this slavery. Uh, and that, of course, uh, it comes to the fore the most radical group, which is known in history as the Jacobins, uh, as the name of their club. Uh, so, so the um, Jacobins uh, are a totally new page, in a sense, of the French Revolution, which is from fall 92 to July 94. And I want to talk a little bit about this now uh, as what this regime is all about. Sometimes it is compared to the Bolsheviks, in the Russian Revolution, the communists, uh, and they are definitely new. So let me identify what are the new features of the regime that is of the Jacobins. Number one, it is a dictatorship. Uh, it is a dictatorship that is born by uh, the new elections of the radicalized, uh, radicalized uh, uh, populace. But the, the reason it is a dictatorship is that the convention is elected and they do uh, pass a couple of laws, but then they kind of like go and recede into the background. And the real power is, aware, is, is wielded by the Committee of Public Safety of 12 men. And the most powerful of these three men, of these 12 men, are uh, Robespierre, Danton, and Marat. Uh, and they are pre so that's a dictatorship. You have a three-man junta who basically rule France in the name of the uh, convention, in the name of the French people. Number two, uh, this is a ideological dictatorship. Uh, it's similar to the Bolsheviks in that they have a propaganda department, meaning that this is Marat, and they have a mobilization uh, department, which is Danton. Uh, in other words, I call it a mobilizational regime. The purpose of that regime is to mobilize the people for the army to fight the foreign enemies, exactly as it would be in the uh, Bolshevik Revolution. So it's a dictatorship, it's a mobilization regime, it's a propaganda regime that lives off mobilizing the masses. And uh, mobilizing the masses is one of its main functions. Uh, and the, uh, the French expression of that is called la vie en masse, which means rise uh, en masse, in, you know, masses of people should rise and be drafted into the army to defend the revolution. Defending the revolution becomes a kind of a god in itself. You know, anything goes, anything goes to defend the revolution and anything goes uh, to uh, smash the enemies of the revolution. And that leads me to the third similarity with the Bolsheviks and that is rule by terror. Uh, and so this, the year 1793, is known in history as the Reign of Terror. So they set up the tribunals, and they basically execute people right and left. The official count, I think, it's 15,000, which is not many compared to uh, uh, the Russian Revolution. But this is official count. There were many other unregistered murders, such as that in prisons, uh, that people were slaughtered. And this is the key what makes it similar to the Bolsheviks. People are killed not for what they did. People are killed for who they are. So if you are an aristocrat, you're a suspect. And if you're an aristocrat who has ever said something critical of the revolution, you're a double suspect. Uh, and if you actually uh, move to do something or even hinted that you might, that's good enough to arrest you and execute you. So people are arrested not for actions, but for political views. So the French Revolution announcing freedom of the press and all these golden days of the summer of 90 when everybody was discussing things and joining political clubs, two years later leads to a situation when you're of the wrong political party, when you are a monarchist, you're dead. We're going to kill you. So uh, this leads to January 73, the beginning of the reign of terror. It starts with the execution of the king. So there's a public execution. He's fined, guilty. Uh, citizen, uh, citizen Louis 
uh, Capit, as they call him by his last name that nobody ever used. He actually was a Bourbon, but not a Capit. But anyway, this is the original dynasty name, and they find him guilty, and they chop off his head, and he's dead. Lou, uh, Marie Antoinette is still in prison. She is going to be dead uh, half a year later. Uh, so she, she aged. There are pictures of her, how she looked. She still survived, and she, of course, you know, prays every day, hoping indeed that her uh, brother would lead Austrian troops to Paris. Um, so um, uh, the king is executed, and now you have uh, several other reforms. One of the key reforms of 1793 is the repeal of primogeniture, which is very, very important for the future in France and for the, um, for the population of France. Uh, primogeniture means the, the oldest son gets everything and the others get nothing. So it's a system that's still in, in effect in England. Uh, a lord's son gets everything, all the others are not lords, and they won't get anything at all. They have to work to make a living. Now that is abolished. Now all heirs to the throne, I mean to anything, it's the same way, it's a civil code in France to the present day. All children have equal rights for the inheritance. It's the same way now in France. Uh, so that actually uh, divides up the landed estates in France, and there won't be any big ones anymore because they will be divided with each generation, uh, and that would lead to very significant demographic changes. Uh, the uh, next thing the, uh, the Robespierre government does is confiscate property from the enemies of the revolution, which is against... Uh, really the real law. It's sort of illegal. Who is the enemy of revolution? But what court decision? What actions qualify to be the enemy of revolution? And why is property alienated from people not for their actions, but who they are? So this is kind of really uh, very, very skimpy uh, legal grounds for this, but they do it anyway. They establish price controls, something that the Bolsheviks are going to do too, because uh, market conditions, prices are skyrocketing and they need to stop it. They also introduce a new calendar. Uh, as a matter of fact, the 22nd of September, 1792, year one, day one, they actually introduce a new calendar which is based on rationality, on reason. Reason is a new god. And there'll be uh, three weeks, 10 days each. And each month is going to be 30 days. It's like a complete uh, reassessment of the uh, calendar. Uh, and this is the time of execution of the priests, and attacks on the church, and the, 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 the Jacobins were true enemies of the church. They were true atheists, like the Bolsheviks. And if there is a time in the French Revolution where there's a really a war on the church, that is the time. That is 1793. Now, in the Russian Revolution, it lasted much, much longer, and the church had to, to endure blows for several decades uh, before it stopped. But in France, it was mostly 1793-94. Uh, so, in 1793, Britain joins the war, so now there's a huge coalition, Austria, Prussia, and Britain, are now against uh, the, uh, uh, the revolutionary government, and they are now going into a frenzy of fear. Fear is the key word in the French Revolution, and uh, what Danton is doing is, is miraculous. Many people would compare him to Trotsky. He's mobilizing the army. Uh, and, and they do absolutely miraculous things. They mobilize one million into the French army. There's the biggest army that ever existed, ever. Uh, and that's the French Revolutionary Army with one million troops. And they do fight. And for the first time, this army is a kind of an ideological army. These are poor people who fight, as they believe, for the revolution against uh, the kings and the autocracy, liberté, égalité, fraternité, on the tricolor uh, flags of the French army. The French army becomes the army of revolution, something that Napoleon or Bonaparte would inherit as one of the uh, officers in the, uh, in the army. In the summer of 93, um, uh, Charlotte Corday uh, comes to uh, Marat under the pretext of having a list of the enemies of the revolution. And he would receive her, and she would take a knife and stab him to death. And then she would be arrested. She would not try to run away. And then they would ask her, why did you kill him? And she would say, I wanted peace. 
such an interesting moment in the uh, in, in French history, but in any case, she's executed too, but at least the uh, voice of the people is no more, and the, uh, the the paper shuts down, and this is the first crisis. Wait. The first, just a sec. The first crisis of this regime, I need to speak about a couple of minutes, and then we'll finish. So, um, the... Um, uh, the revolution regime goes into uh, a crisis with the murder of Marat, uh, and then you have actually another year of its existence with the same uh, cast of characters. Robespierre is giving sp revolutionary speeches. The nature of his power is speeches in the convention, speeches, speeches, speeches. Uh, then uh, the next crisis comes in April 94, when Danton is executed unmasked as the enemy of the people. This is, of course, he's no longer any enemy or anything like this. It's that Robespierre fears that the popularity of Danton as the creator of the Red Army, uh, sorry, Red Army is like Trotsky, who would create an army and Stalin would kill him. It's sort of similar situation. Uh, Robespierre fears Danton's popularity and he is killed. And finally, in July uh, 94, there's a crucial moment, and I'll finish at that. Uh, Robespierre comes to the convention with a list of enemies. And he says, I'm going to read you the list of enemies unmasked to be executed. And everybody's afraid that he's going to be on that list. And before he manages to uh, read the list, they come and arrest him. And the next day, uh, the greatest voice of the French Revolution is himself executed. And that brings to the end of the Jacobin dictatorship uh, and the collapse of that regime. So let me do the last sentence. The Jacobin dictatorship showed very important things. It showed that the revolutionary minority government can do amazing things. It showed that propaganda works. It showed that it's possible for a small minority government of revolutionaries to mobilize a huge country and a huge army and win against all odds. It will be a banner to all revolutionaries ever to follow in the next century. Thank you very much, and don't forget to tell everybody how much you love Dr. Brofkin and his lectures. Obviously,